Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome back, history enthusiasts, to another episode of the History AI Podcast. I'm your host Chuck, and with me, as always, is the ever-knowledgeable Marco. Hi everyone. Today we have a gripping tale from the annals of history, the Battle of Stamford Bridge. That's right Marco. This battle, often overshadowed by the more famous Battle of Hastings, was a turning point in English history. Let's paint the picture of the world in 1066. It's a period of great upheaval and power struggles. England, after the death of Edward the Confessor, is a country at a crossroads. Edward's passing left a power vacuum, with no clear heir to the throne. Absolutely Marco. Edward's reign had seen relative stability, but his death on January 5, 1066, plunged England into uncertainty. He left no children, and several powerful figures eyed the throne hungrily. Among them was Harold Godwin's son, the Earl of Wessex. He was one of the richest and most powerful men in England and had a strong claim to the throne through his family's ties to previous kings. Then there was William, Duke of Normandy, across the English Channel. He claimed that Edward had promised him the throne and that Harold had sworn to support his claim. A complicated web of oaths and promises. And let's not forget the Norwegian king, Harald Hardrada. A legendary Viking warrior, Hardrada believed he had a claim based on an agreement between earlier Norwegian and English kings. He saw the English succession crisis as his chance to expand his empire. This was a world where kingship was often contested on the battlefield rather than just in council chambers. Each of these claimants was preparing to assert their claim, not just through diplomacy, but with cold steel and the might of armies. In this simmering pot of rivalries, the Battle of Stamford Bridge wasn't just a conflict, it was a culmination of a power struggle that had been brewing for years. It was more than just a battle, it was a decisive moment that would shape the future of England and, indeed, all of Europe. And with this backdrop, the stage was set for one of the most pivotal battles in English history. To fully appreciate the strategy behind Stamford Bridge, we need to rewind a bit and talk about the Battle of Fulford, which happened just five days earlier, on September 20, 1066. Right you are Marco, Hardrada's strategy was not just about landing on English shores and marching to York. His first major engagement was at Fulford, near York, where he faced the Northern Earls, Edwin and Morcar. This battle is often overshadowed by Stamford Bridge, but it was crucial. Hardrada, alongside toasted Godwin's son, Harold's estranged brother, led a well-organized Viking army against the English forces. It's like something out of a saga Marco. The Vikings, known for their fierce combat skills, were pitted against the local English forces, who were determined to defend their land. And the terrain played a huge role. The battle took place beside the River Ouse, with the English forces holding a position blocking the road to York. The Vikings cleverly used the marshy ground to their advantage, flanking the English troops. It was a fierce and bloody battle. The English forces fought valiantly, but they were ultimately overwhelmed by the Vikings' might and strategy. Edwin and Morcar were defeated, and this victory opened the path to York for Hardrada. This victory at Fulford was a key part of Hardrada's plan. He intended to use York as a base to control northern England. By securing York, he could strengthen his position before moving further into England. And that's where King Harold comes back into the picture. Hearing of his defeat and the fall of York, Harold realized the grave threat posed by Hardrada. He had to act fast. So, King Harold swiftly gathered his forces, pulling together an army in a remarkably short amount of time. He then embarked on a rapid march north, covering about 185 miles in just four days, an incredible feat. It was a race against time, with Harold needing to confront this formidable Viking invader before he could consolidate his hold on the north. And that leads us to the fateful day of September 25, 1066, at Stamford Bridge. Let's delve deeper into the composition and objectives of the forces that clashed at Stamford Bridge. Harold Hardrada's army was a formidable Norse force, a mix of seasoned Viking warriors and mercenaries, known for their combat prowess and feared across Europe. They were not just fearsome warriors Marco, but also experienced in naval operations, having sailed across the North Sea to reach England. Hardrada's troops were equipped with chainmail, axes, swords, and the iconic Viking longships that enabled their rapid movement. 
As for their objective, Hardrada aimed to capture York and use it as a strategic foothold. His victory at Fulford had already given him a strong position. York, one of the largest cities in northern England, was key to controlling the region and a valuable prize in his quest for the English crown. Now, turning to King Harold's forces. After the news of Fulford, Harold swiftly mustered his army, comprising mainly of the housecarls, his elite personal troops, and the feared which were militia drawn from the free men of England. The housecarls were well trained and well armed, with their fearsome two handed battle axes, swords, and spears. They were the backbone of Harold's army and were crucial in the forthcoming battle. And let's not forget the speed of Harold's march north. It was a testament to his leadership and the dedication of his troops. They were determined and battle ready, despite the long and exhausting journey from the south of England. Harold's objective was clear he needed to decisively defeat Hardrada to secure his realm. With the threat of William of Normandy still looming, Harold couldn't afford a prolonged conflict in the north. So, we have Hardrada, a seasoned Viking warrior bent on conquest, and Harold, a newly crowned king defending his realm. Both leaders were experienced, both armies were formidable, and the stakes couldn't have been higher. It was a perfect storm, setting the stage for a clash that would not only decide the fate of a kingdom, but also mark the end of an era in European history. The Battle of Stamford Bridge, on September 25, 1066, was not just a confrontation, but a pivotal moment in history. Let's break down how this epic battle unfolded. Early in the morning, King Harold's army approached Stamford Bridge, a strategic crossing point over the River Derwent. Hardrada and his forces were taken by surprise. They were not expecting Harold to reach the north so quickly, let alone challenge them in battle. The Norse were caught off guard, many without their armor, as they were camped on the eastern side of the river. The element of surprise was in Harold's favor. A legendary moment from this battle was the stand of a lone Norse axeman, who held the narrow bridge against the English, preventing their advance. This Viking warrior fought valiantly, slaying many Englishmen before he was finally brought down. While this heroic stand bought Hardrada some time to organize his troops, it wasn't enough. Harold's forces eventually crossed the bridge and a fierce melee ensued. The battle was brutal and intense. Hardrada, leading from the front like a true Viking warrior, was an imposing figure. His presence on the battlefield inspired his men, but also made him a prime target. In the thick of the fight, Hardrada was struck down, a significant blow to the Norse morale. Tostig, seeing the turn of events, took command, but he too was fighting a losing battle. Harold's tactics were effective. He managed to flank the Norse army, using both his housecarls and the fiat effectively. The English forces, despite being tired from their rapid march, fought with determination and skill. The terrain played a crucial role as well. The English used their knowledge of the land to their advantage, pinning the Norse against the river and limiting their mobility. As the battle raged, the tide turned decisively in favor of the English. The Norse were exhausted, fighting without their usual armor, and now leaderless. The arrival of Norse reinforcements from Rickall, led by Aistein or Hardrada's son-in-law, briefly reignited the Norse fighting spirit. Orr's men, fresh and fully armored, charged into battle, but they too were eventually overwhelmed. By the end of the day, the field was littered with the dead. The Norse army was decimated, and their dream of conquering England was shattered. King Harold emerged victorious, but this victory came at a great cost. This battle was not just a clash of armies, but a clash of eras. It marked the end of the Viking Age and the beginning of a new chapter in English history. In the aftermath of the Battle of Stamford Bridge, the tales of heroism and the extent of the casualties paint a vivid picture of medieval warfare. Let's delve into these aspects. Absolutely Marco. The story of the Norse axemen who defended Stamford Bridge is legendary. This unnamed warrior, standing alone against the English advance, epitomizes the Norse spirit and valor. He reportedly slew scores of Englishmen before being defeated, a testament to his skill and bravery. On the English side, King Harold himself is a figure of heroism. Leading his troops rapidly northwards and then directly into battle, he displayed remarkable leadership and courage. His ability to inspire his men, rallying them to fight a formidable enemy despite exhaustion, is a key highlight of the battle. The battle also saw acts of bravery from ordinary soldiers. The English fiat comprising non-professional soldiers, stood their ground against the seasoned Viking warriors. 
Their courage and determination were crucial in turning the tide of the battle. But heroism often comes with a high cost. The casualties at Stamford Bridge were staggering. Norse losses were immense, with estimates suggesting that only a fraction of Hardrada's force survived. This included many of Norway's finest warriors, a devastating blow to the Norse. Harold Hardrada, the last great Viking king, met his end on this battlefield. His death symbolized not just the loss of a king but the end of an era. Tostig Godwin's son also fell, his ambitions dying with him. The English side, though victorious, suffered significant losses as well. The battle left Harold's army weakened, a factor that would have dire consequences in the face of the upcoming Norman invasion. The field of Stamford Bridge was a grim sight, a testament to the brutality of the conflict. Bodies of Norse and Englishmen alike lay scattered, a stark reminder of the battle's ferocity and the high price of medieval warfare. This battle, while a decisive victory for Harold, was a pyrrhic one. The heavy losses suffered would soon impact the English defence against William of Normandy at the Battle of Hastings. The Battle of Stamford Bridge wasn't just a confrontation of armies, it was a chess match of medieval tactics and strategies. Let's break down the tactical aspects and the battle's significance. Right Marco. The most striking tactical element was King Harold's rapid march north. Covering around 185 miles in just four days with a heavily armed force was an incredible feat this swift movement caught Hardrada off guard, a critical advantage for the English. At the battle itself, the terrain played a significant role. Stamford Bridge and the surrounding area offered a strategic choke point. The Norse, caught on the wrong side of the river and in disarray, were at a severe disadvantage. And let's talk about the famous stand at the bridge. While it's often romanticized, it was a tactical move. The lone Norse warrior's defense held back the English army, giving Hardrada crucial time to organize his troops, albeit not fully into their battle formations or armor. In terms of formation, the English army likely used the shield wall, a formation where soldiers stand shoulder to shoulder, shields overlapping, presenting a formidable defensive line. This was effective against the Norse charge and allowed the English to push forward effectively. On the Norse side, Hardrada's initial disorganization was a significant setback. However, the late arrival of reinforcements led by Eistian or brought a renewed vigor to the Norse. They reportedly fought with such intensity that it was said Orr's men were in a berserk state. But despite this, the English flanking maneuvers, a classic tactic of medieval warfare, proved decisive. Harold's ability to encircle and squeeze the Norse troops against the river reduced their mobility and effectiveness. In terms of importance Marco, this battle was monumental. It marked the end of Viking invasions of England. Hardrada's defeat was the closing chapter of the Viking Age, a period that had seen Norse warriors dominate large parts of Europe. Moreover, the battle had a significant impact on the subsequent Battle of Hastings. Harold's forced march north and the casualties sustained at Stamford Bridge left him and his army exhausted and diminished, affecting their ability to effectively counter William of Normandy's invasion. Indeed Marco. The Battle of Stamford Bridge is a turning point in English history. It was not just a military victory for Harold but also a moment that reshaped the future of England, setting the stage for the Norman conquest and the transformation of English society and governance. The impact and legacy of the Battle of Stamford Bridge extend far beyond the battlefield. This battle was a pivotal moment in European history, with consequences that resonated for centuries. Absolutely Marco. The immediate impact was on the English defense capabilities. Harold's victory, while significant, left his army weakened and exhausted. This was a critical factor just weeks later at the Battle of Hastings, where William of Normandy emerged victorious, forever changing the course of English history. The battle effectively marked the end of the Viking Age. Harold Hardrada, often considered the last great Viking king, had his ambitions to conquer England crushed. This defeat signaled the decline of Norse influence in Europe. From a broader perspective, Stamford Bridge symbolized the transition from the era of Viking raids and settlements in England to a period of Norman rule. It was the beginning of a cultural and political shift that would lay the foundation for modern England. The tactics and strategies employed at Stamford Bridge also had lasting implications for medieval warfare. Harold's rapid mobilization and forced march north demonstrated the effectiveness of swift, decisive action, a lesson that would be echoed in future military campaigns.
On a cultural level, the battle has been immortalized in various forms of literature and art. It is often depicted as a heroic stand against overwhelming odds, highlighting themes of bravery, strategy, and the inevitable tides of change. The battle also influenced the feudal system in England. Following the Norman conquest, William of Normandy instituted Norman governance and landholding practices. This reshaped English society, law, and even language, with Norman French influencing the development of the English language. And let's not forget the personal stories. The legend of the lone Norse warrior at the bridge, Hardrada's ambition, Harold's leadership, these stories have become part of the rich tapestry of English history, inspiring countless retellings and adaptations. Before we wrap up, a huge thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Your support keeps history alive. Don't forget to rate, follow, and share the History AI podcast. Got a topic you're itching to hear about? Let us know on our social media channels. Until next time, keep exploring the depths of history. From the mind behind the History AI podcast comes an electrifying journey into the past. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Dive into a tale where Benjamin Franklin, America's beloved inventor, takes an unexpected journey through time. But with his leap, he unleashes a powerful ripple. Now, with dark forces lurking in the shadows, harnessing this energy to shatter and enslave the world, it's a race against time. Will Franklin fix the future? Or will history rewrite itself? Uncover the secrets. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Time has never been more fragile. On Amazon now.